Yes, I'm disappointed in a way because uh, help is hard to get this day and time, and and I'd like to see these prisoners used to uh, keep the carters of the buildings and the grounds kept up. Uh, but we can't touch them. We start to work them. Legal service would sue us before sundown. I think you know that, Jack. The Veterans Administration Hospital in South Dallas has finished work on a new drug dependency treatment unit at a cost of about $31,000. The center, under the direction of Dr. Ralph Robinowitz, officially opens Monday when 10 veterans move in for voluntary treatment. At the direction of the president, the Veterans Administration has implemented a number of these centers nationwide to handle returning veterans who are drug addicts. It is voluntary on the part of veterans to participate and the center will handle 16 in-house patients at first, then will continue outpatient care on those who are released as the program progresses. This is Jim Mitchell. He came up with the idea, well, maybe I could trade things I had for things they had. Well, they love that idea. Now, Murphy, obviously the things Murphy traded them were of no consequence. But several men were identified from pictures that he was able to get from these communist journalist files. These were men who were carried as missing in action, and Murphy was able to produce North Vietnamese official military photographs in the files of journalists around the communist world. The men take, pictures were taken on the ground after they were captured, the man in good condition. I'll close now with one more. I can't tell you the things that are significant. Someday we'll be able to discuss these things. But after we went through the publicity campaign, after we had stabilized the situation in the camps, then we were able to build the intelligence network, then we were able to start more meaningful things in terms of trying to get information on specific men, direct communications with the people who hold the men, and so on and so forth. say a lot uh, even though you know it was hurt a lot and I wasn't in that great shape to go deep and uh, but it, it's disappointing remember because the guys sit there and wait on you you can't run patterns against them you know they just backpedal to about 15 to 18 yards and sit there and wait for you to go somewhere because they know you're not going to run past them so uh, it does put a little burden you know on the passing game if if we don't go deep now I, I feel like we're going to this year a little more well, was it was it the injury perhaps the, the cracked ribs in the Cleveland game or, or could it be a lack of speed well, uh, I feel like it's more by design. We just don't really throw deep that much. You know, we're almost like Ohio State. We get there, and uh, 
Occasionally, you know, we will go deep to buy, but uh, I think we're going to change that a little bit more this year. It's going to be a little more uh, exciting passing game, I think. You're talking about opening up the uh, the offense then. Well, I feel like we're going to have to. <laughs> we're going to have to score some points, and uh, if, to do that, you have to open up a little bit. I get the idea. I'm talking with Lance Allworth, the lobbyist, who has uh, <laughs> perhaps passed on a few ideas from offensive personnel. <laughs> I've always done that. You know, you have, you have to be a politician in this game a little bit. But I feel like we're going to throw longer a little bit. Well, at least I hope so. Ron, is the, what is the biggest thing that you've had to learn here? Simply terminology? Yes, that's, that's about the only thing. Uh, terminology and uh, having Roger and Craig both learn the way I run my pass routes because I, I, I kind of have a hitch in, uh, in my routes uh, and in my stride. And, uh, you know, I don't run as smooth as Lance does or Bob. And so I, they have to learn to, uh, you know, judge my, uh, the way I run my routes so they can throw accordingly. There is great concern always uh, with the wide receivers and his technique on blocking. How would you assess your talents in that department? Uh, uh, mediocre to poor. <laughs> right now, I, I'm, I'm improving, but I, I still have a long ways to go. But I'm trying. It's not really for a, for a guy who makes a living catching passes. It's not the most glorious aspect of the game, the, the block, is it? Well, it's a necessity uh, here with the Dallas Cowboys. And, and uh, you know, everybody else has, you know, has to do their share. And the linemen, they, they block every down. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm uh, willing and able just to I gotta get the body in the, right, <laughs> in the right place at the right time. Very seriously, I think that uh, regardless of uh, what the result is tomorrow at New York, uh, whether Rochester beat New York, which means that we can't get more points than Rochester, uh, it'll be a good um, exercise for the Russian game, which will be our next big game to think about. And you look upon the Russian game as something to really keep you in tune for the playoffs? Oh, yeah, this would be one of the biggest games that we've ever played here. And it's hard to, to know which is more important, uh, to, to the prestige of the Russian game or, or the championship, which we played all season for, of course. The first question is, will local water and sewer service rates go up? City manager Roger Lyon says no, but eventually maybe so. Lyon is baffled as to why Moody's Investors Company would drop the credit rating because, according to Lyon, the water and sewer fund is in better shape now than when the same company gave the city a double-A rating last January. The financial problems, or the so-called problems, that the New York company found should be revealed next week when their full report is received. Lyon says the new rating could cost the city up to $87,000 over a 25-year period, the life of bonds sold. The city has $6 million in water revenue bonds they hope to sell early next year. Principal and interest on the bonds are paid for through the charges assessed users of water and sewer services. Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move in Fort Worth.
In returning to Channel 8, I do so particularly pleased that there will be again the opportunity to do commentaries on the crucial issues of the day. We have always had a rather free hand at Channel 8, and I think this is a plus factor for any good news operation, to have a free hand in stating opinions that uh, we have done homework about and conclusions that we arrive at. Also, we are quite eager to get into the syndication. We think it has good potential. And one thing Mike did not mention about the face-to-face, -face, the one way it will differ from the program as it was nearly three years ago when we left, we will travel the program. It will not necessarily originate in Dallas. If the subject of most importance and of the most interest for a given week is somewhere else in the world, we will go to him and do the interview in his locale. 